Guinness distributed nearly 3 million barrels of Guinness annually in the early 1900s. They used a wide range of modes of transport to distribute their product nationally and internationally. Guinness was shipped by rail, canal, road, river and sea. All this was coordinated by their very own traffic department. My name's Anne Boyle and I come from um, Maryland. Say the very first memory of me, my uncle walking on the boats, because, on the Guinness boats that went from the North Wall to, ended up in Manchester. I know Manchester's inland, but they could go on the ship canal to, in to bring the, the Guinness to Manchester. And I suppose it was him and his presence getting brought back from, uh, from Manchester would be the first thing, the Guinness boats. Looking at the trains, the big train going up from John's Road into end of Stephen's Lane, looking at the smaller ones around the brewery. Okay, my grandfather on my mother's side uh, worked as a train driver and he drove that little narrow gauge railway train uh, up and down the, uh, through the, around the Guinness site. But the train went from uh, went all around Guinness's, and I believe it was six mile of railway track in Guinness's inside, and there was a very narrow gauge railway. The tracks and the, the steam engines themselves were made in Cork Street, in 107 Cork Street, by a firm called Spences. And it went around Guinness's and then went down as far as Kingsbridge Station, as we call it then, Houston Station now, and it went across the road. The traffic would have to stop while the train was going by. At the time, you'd never have a model train. And these were the nearest things you'd see to a model train, so you'd be delighted to get down and just look at them and you'd be fascinated by how small they were and, you know, how slow they went and how efficient they, uh, efficient they were. So it was a place, a thing that would draw you down to have a look at them. Well, I always oh, no. looked at them going up and down, you know, because we lived on the keys, actually, where the boats used to go up and down. Down, yeah. In my young days, that's like my grandmother's house was there. and oh. The windows from my grandmother's house looked right onto the Liffey, mm. where the barges went up and down all day, you know. Yeah. Uh, but there was a fleet of three Guinness ships which ran between Dublin and Liverpool or Manchester. To go to Manchester, you had to wait at anchor for the tide to rise so you could get into the canal. And then there was a, a two or three hour journey, I'm not quite sure many hours, up the canal to Manchester. And then all the way back down again. And you had to go through a lock to let you back out into the Mersey, but you only do it while the tide is high in the Mersey. So there was a science in itself, meeting, meeting timetables with tides. And of course, the tide changes in our day anyway. So it's great fun trying to balance tides and schedules. No, there was always a, a man with a flag with a big train. And um, you'd see him to have a flag, so you'd know that you shouldn't go near it. Well, you wouldn't play on them now, but uh, maybe braver kids than me would have. I, I wouldn't go near them now, that's for sure, because I'd be afraid. But uh, we used to follow them, and I'll tell you why. Uh, when they'd be carrying barley, some of it would inevitably spill, and anyone that had pigeons or birds around the place, uh, we'd get the barley for nothing. And again, there was never any problem doing that. If it landed on the ground, you were entitled to get it. Mm-hmm. 